The Kalradic Empire is a hydra, a union of many peoples forged together under one banner by the iron anvil of conquest and the stern hammer of government. In the world of Bannerlord, the Kalradic Empire is the dominant political force on the continent, though now weakened amidst a three-sided civil war that threatens to collapse a thousand years of history. The Empire, as it currently stands, bears strong comparisons to one that existed in our own world. The Eastern Roman Empire, known in later centuries as the Byzantine Empire, was a major player in the European theatre from the 4th century and decline of the Western Roman Empire to the fall of Constantinople in 1453 to the Turks. Today, we will discuss the rise and fall of the Byzantines their political system and military structure to set the stage for the Calradic Empire that once ruled the entire continent of Calradia in Mountain Blade Bannerlord. Rise of the Eastern Roman Empire The Eastern Roman Empire has its foundations thanks to Emperor Constantine, who, after nearly a century of crises, determined that the city of Rome was no longer an important administrative centre. In 330 AD, Constantine founded a second Rome on top of the ancient Greek settlement of Byzantium, choosing this site for the capital as it was situated along both east and west trade routes and offered quicker reaction for the less pacified eastern and northern frontiers. Under Constantine, the Roman Empire as a whole prospered. Standard coinage established a stable currency. The military, largely depleted due to civil war and invasions, gained much of its military strength back and subsequently brought Dacia under Roman rule again after being abandoned by Aurelian during the crisis of the 3rd century. Christianity was not elevated as the official religion of the empire, but was heavily favoured during Constantine's rule, with administrative officers regularly assigned to Christians clerics exempt from taxes, and bishops given judicial posts. Constantine's administrative and religious legacy, along with a revitalized military, would provide the stability the Eastern Empire needed to survive in the coming centuries. The 4th and 5th centuries saw the Eastern Roman Empire, unlike their Western counterparts, largely spared from the expansion of Germanic tribes and the Huns, thanks in part to Constantine's work, but also due to two main factors. The first is the Wall of Constantine, constructed in the late 320s to 330s, and later the Theodosian Walls in 413. Both sets of walls are incredible feats of engineering, the Theodosian Walls especially so. Consisting of three layers, the Theodosian walls were at their thickest six metres deep, and surrounded by a moat and guarded by a multitude of towers. These walls repelled hordes of enemies in the Eastern Empire's reign, and were not breached until 1204 during the Fourth Crusade, and then not again until 1453 by the Turks. The second factor in the Byzantine Empire's success was a robust rural economic system, fueled in large part by prosperous trade routes. It allowed the Eastern Roman Empire to pay off any substantial threats they could not take on, as Theodosius did with Attila the Hun, offering an annual tribute of 300 kilograms, or 700 pounds, of gold. This financial resource also gave emperors the ability to hire mercenaries, which Theodosius's successor, Marcion, took advantage of after the death of Attila employing a great deal of Huns after Attila's death to fight in his armies. As the West collapsed under the weight of Germanic expansion and instability in the late 5th century AD, what could now be called the Byzantine Empire thrived. Under the reign of Justinian I during the early to mid-6th century, the empire would aggressively expand into the former Western Roman territories of Africa and Italy led by the famous general Belisarius. Minor expansions north into the Balkans 
and an eventual negotiated peace with the Persians, would see the Byzantine Empire at its pinnacle of expansion. But conquests were not all that Justinian is credited for. Widely known as Justinian's Code, Justinian's legacy would extend to legal practice, revising the ancient Roman legal code, establishing new systems of law, and securing Christian practices in the multi-volume set. In a very purposeful move, Justinian had the collection penned primarily in Greek instead of Latin, marking one major step during his reign that the Byzantine Empire sought to truly break away from its now collapsed Western kin. In our next video, we'll learn about the catastrophic events of the Battle of Manzikert and the beginning of the end for the Empire of the Byzantines. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when the next part of the series releases. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.